Hey everybody, this is Jackie with Jackie's Recent Things. And today we're going to do a cemetery saddle. Um, typically these come flattened out, not bent. Um, I'm repurposing the one from my grandparents. Um, I change it out um, quite often. So this one's perfectly fine. No reason to not reuse it. So what we're going to do, the first thing is we're going to put the foam block on the cemetery saddle. This has spikes in it. So I'm going to line it up both sides. Take a look. And I'm going to spike that down on there. Like so. But to make sure that it doesn't blow off, I'll pull the block back off. Low temp with your glue, otherwise you will melt the styrofoam. And I'm going to shoot hot glue into the holes. You can find these where it already has the block on them. Some of them, like the ones you get at Hobby Lobby, you will have to uh, zip tie the block on. So, okay, the first thing we want to do is basically put what's called the skirt on. Um, the skirt is just going to basically trying to cover up this part. It also is going to dictate how big it's going to be. I don't want mine to be really, really big. So what I'm going to do is this is how the uh, leather fern comes. I'm going to cut this part off, this smaller stem off. To where it's shorter, so my skirt won't be as big. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the top and side and just start there in the center. And then I'm going to bend these down. Like I said, this is just to cover. So it's just a, basically a skirt. The other reason I shorten these up is so that they don't cover um, the, the gravestone too much. So I am going into the side. I'm spacing these probably about two inches apart as I go. Now if you do make a great deal of these or plan on making a great deal of these, you will want to get a glue pot um, to make this go faster. That way you can just dip and go. For my business, I don't advertise that I do these. It's my personal preference. Um, I do have people that do order these from me. So I put one in the center because I'm just going to put some on the either side on the end. Still bending them down.
if you deal with florals, it's very important to get a good pair of cutters. The um, ones that they sell at Walmart in the floral section are too small and too dainty and not going to really get the job done. On a regular basis, I recommend that you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, and just purchase a good pair of wire cutters. I use um, cobalt. Also, when I do cemetery saddles, typically um, I don't spend a lot on the florals. The reason I don't spend a lot on the florals, they are going to fade in the sun. Um, it's one of those things you just might as well accept it. Don't worry about extending the life. A lot of, I see a lot of people ask, well, what can I spray on? Don't spray it. Just don't spend as much money on the florals so you don't have to charge as much. Because these are going to be directly out in the sun. <coughs> and um, you're at the mercy of God. My price point for mine is I try to keep mine basically at $65. If they're wanting larger, obviously, because it's going to be bigger, it's going to take more material. And that will be up to the customer at that point. If uh, you are an asymmetrical person like I am, uh, you should be able to just rock these out. So, 12 leather fern come in a package, so it'll take you about two to go around. the saddle. So at this point, yes, you can still see the floral block. Not too bad. So I'm going to bend these down just a little bit more. When customers ask me to make these, I they usually have a picture on hand, and I ask them to, to send me a picture of the headstone so that I know where the lettering and everything is so I don't cover it. All right, so now we have a nice skirt on here. And like I said, this is just your skirt. You are just using this to cover the mechanics of the floral blocks. See how that's covered up now? So now you actually want to get into the florals. So typically I what I do is you'll have your two flowers up to three flowers. You want them to stage down in size. Um, that's not what I want to do with this one. So basically what we're going to do for me to just show as an example is the yellow one we're going to use and we're going to pretend that this one is your big flower. This is going to be my main focal point. So I will start directly in the center with this one, like so. So you're going to go directly in the center, and that's where you're going to start. Now your spacing 
is going to be depending on the size of your flower. I know that I have um, that I'm going to add greenery and I'm going to add another set of tulips. I don't want my uh, other set of tulips to be cramped. We're also going to cut these stems down a little bit shorter because we want kind of a rounded shape, which I'll show you in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and space these out and I'm going to go just a little bit lower. And I'm going to do the same thing with these and I'm going to point them out. So I'm going to angle these in. So see how it's stair steps down in shape? That's what you're looking to do with your first row. But you're going to continue to do that as you go on. So what I'm going to do with my next row is I'm actually going to go between. I'm going to offset and, and go between. And the height for the first two are going to is going to be like almost a, is the same height as the ones next to my top one. And then once again, I'm going to go between these two and stair step down in size. Like so. So see the shape that we're creating with our flowers? See how I went between and I left space. But we're gonna I'm gonna bend these out just a little bit. Because I kind of want them facing me just a little bit more. So we want everything to be matchy matchy. So I'm going to come to the other side and repeat the process I'll, and do the same thing over again with the other side. I'm going to go between the flowers and kind of point them out. each time going a little bit shorter. The other thing that's really, really important is that your first flower that you put in really is going to determine the size. So I would say that mine's about six inches off the floral block. If you want a really big um, cemetery saddle, you're going to want to put that higher. So now I'm ready to come in with my orange. Now my first two orange are going to stand as tall as my center. They're going to go either side and stand as tall. Notice I'm pushing my stems up because I want that greenery to show. So I push the um, 
greenery stem up. I'm trying to find two that have a, there we go, two that have a long stem to put in for my first ones. I want to make sure the stem's long enough before I cut it. So I'm going to go directly between the flowers. Like I said, the first two are going to be the same height. And now I'm going to go shorter. So it's a gradual slope down. So just be careful as you start your slope. It's always better measure once and cut twice. So it's always better if you cut just a little bit long just to be safe. So here's our shape that we have now. Notice it's notice it's rounded. It's tapering down. So now I'm going to come to the outside. And once again, still going directly in the center between the first flowers that I put in. Pushing the greenery up if that's what needs to be done. And tapering down in size. So see how our shape is? So we're going to come around and do the same thing on the other side with the orange. Place the one in the center first. So if you're noticing, this is a very um, asymmetrical design. So if you have OCD like me, this will be perfect for you. Okay, so now we want to come down a little further and fill out the front. So I'm going to go back with my yellow flower. Start with it. And I'm going to come out the front. Tilt it down just a little bit to come out the front. 
So I'm keeping my spacing even. Now that we've established our flower colors, it will go a little bit quicker between rotating between the two colors. And still coming out, you're wanting to still continue your fan in shape. Notice what a beautiful, nice, pleasant shape that we have going. Very symmetrical. That's what you basically want um, doing a cemetery saddle. So now we're going to come around the other side and do this, repeat the same thing over again on the outer edge. Tilted those out a bit far, so let's reel them back in. Once you get the hang of doing these, they actually go pretty quick. Like I said, if you do a great deal, if you want to plan on doing a great deal of these, definitely get a glue pot so you can just dip and go. I also, this was also actually where a pick machine um, would come into play because you want to make sure the flowers don't blow out so that would give an extra added support to your flowers See what a nice, beautifully even shape that we have. So now we want to come to the end and add some flowers here. So we want to keep in mind the shape that we're wanting to hold. And that's why I always do this last. Because this is going to the first flower that I put in is going to be a little bit shorter. 
We want them to continue that taper down. So if you had um, one large flower or one smaller flower, my orange, were, for argument's sake for this, you would pretend is your um, smaller flower. But always when you're doing these, start out with your biggest flower. That way you get a good enough spacing. I typically just buy my florals at Walmart or I get whatever is on sale at Trees of Trends based on the color that the customer wants. I try really hard not to put more than $25 of florals into these. So you see how we have a really, really nice, beautiful shape. So now we have our florals on, we're going to start adding our greenery or our filler. We're going to get this filled in. What I've chosen is a really good mix um, that I found at Walmart. It's got some purple in it. It's got eucalyptus. It's got the grass. So that's what I chose to use for this um, project. You want your greenery to go just slightly shorter than your flower when you're adding it. So I'm going to cut my stem pretty short, let it fly in my face for a second. And I'm just going to go between. the flowers like so. I'm going between, not between this way, between this way. And just like we started out, it'll step down in size. So I'm going directly between the flowers. This row and this row, I'm going dead between, like these, I'll go between. I'm making sure that my grass is pointing out this way um, and that's just how this particular um, greenery goes and the reason I'm doing that is because I'll you'll come back on we're going to come back on this side so I'm just being a little bit picky where that is concerned. On these last, we're going to have to cut the grass off, and that's okay to get it short enough. And that's just the way this particular stem goes.
but we're not going to throw that grass away because I love putting grass in different projects. So I'm just going to set it to the side. See how it's starting to fill out really nice? So I'm going to go ahead and grab these and come around to the other side and do the same thing. Now at this point with putting the greenery in, you probably don't need to flip back and forth. Um, I just prefer to. When I first started doing these, I was so panicked about covering the floral block up that it was just way too much of a priority and I wasn't doing it right. As time went by, I realized once I get done adding my greenery, the floral block is covered up. 